CKD is one of the most common diagnoses that we make in our clinical practice. Very common in middle-aged and elderly cats in particular. And for example, one study showed that about a third of cats over the age of 15 have this condition. Well, clinical signs of CKD actually can be quite difficult to spot because they're often quite subtle and non-specific. Things like weight loss, depression, lethargy, slightly reduced appetite, lots of things which often pass unnoticed by an owner for long periods of time. If disease is more advanced, then there are more obvious clinical signs which we might see. For example, one of the signs that an owner often thinks of, which is an increased thirst and increased amount of urination. But that's only present really in about a third of cats with renal disease. And once that is evident, that's an indication that the disease is quite advanced. There are a range of other clinical signs that we look for in affected cats, and that would include things like nausea and vomiting, perhaps bad breath related to a uremic halitosis, and signs related to high blood pressure, such as blindness or difficulty seeing. So often, clinical examination for CKD is not diagnostic, and that's because it's most common for cats to not show specific abnormalities on the physical examination. So, for example, they may just be presented with some weight loss, or they may be a little bit dehydrated. But there are some more helpful signs that we do look for on our examination, and that would include evidence of anemia, which can be associated with more severe CKD, also changes to the size of the kidneys. So, for example, um, some cats will suffer from CKD associated with renal lymphoma or polycystic kidney disease, and those are abnormality in palpate on a clinical examination. One of the biggest problems that vets face is that it's often very difficult to identify disease when it's in its early stages. So we need to be proactive. We need to actually look for making this diagnosis more often than we probably are. And we need to look specifically at cats that are at risk of this condition, so our middle-aged and elderly cats, assess them more frequently when they get into that age group and look for subtle signs like weight loss and changes to their urine-specific gravity as an indication that they might be suffering from this condition. Diagnosis of CKD in the early stages is very difficult because cats, like humans, all have a functional reserve of renal tissue, which means that they need to lose actually at least two-thirds of their renal function before we can see any compromise um, on the laboratory tests that we do, for example. So that's the first issue that we have to face. And there are two clues that we can look for to try and identify early kidney disease in cats. And those are firstly, a loss in the ability to produce concentrated urine. And that's something which typically is seen once a cat has lost about two thirds of their renal function. The second thing that we look for is a change in the cat's body weight, specifically weight loss. Both of these things, weight loss and reduction in urine specific gravity, are not specific to kidney disease, but they are an indication that as a vet, we should look at this patient more closely and try and identify whether or not they have CKD. Other conditions that can also affect specific gravity and weight that also be common in older cats would include conditions like diabetes mellitus and hypothyroidism, for example. To make an earlier diagnosis of CKD, the first step is to make sure we see all those cats that are in the high-risk group of developing CKD as frequently as possible. The Feline Advisory Bureau has come up with some guidelines, what they've called their Well Cat for Life guidelines. And these suggest, I think very appropriately, that once a cat gets to the age of seven, it should have an annual urinalysis check as part of its assessment. And that's a good point to assess that cat, and if its urine-specific gravity is less than 1040, that's a good indication to look in more detail and see whether or not that cat has CKD or perhaps one of the other conditions like hypothyroidism or diabetes 
that could also you in specific gravity. When the cat starts to get even older than that, say 11 years of age, we should probably consider seeing it twice a year. We should not only be assessing its urine, but by then we should certainly be assessing blood pressure routinely. And we know that systemic hypertension is a common consequence of CKD. So that's another clue that we can look for. But also, very importantly, throughout the cat's life, we should weigh it whenever we see it and also assess its body condition score. And any changes in that, however subtle, can be a potential indication of illness such as CKD. Once a diagnosis of CKD has been made, it's really important to perform a more detailed analysis. So, for example, that should include a dipstick, a sediment examination, a culture, and also proteinuria assessment, ideally using the urine protein to creatinine ratio. And even in those cats that are not proteinuric, when that first assessment is done, it's really important to follow their progress with time because we know that proteinuria has a significant influence on cat's prognosis and survival. I recommend that repeat urinalysis is done every six months in cats with CKD not only to assess for evidence of bacterial urinary tract infections, but very importantly to assess the protein and whether there's been any change in that. Proteinuria is something that we know is essential to monitor, not only because it influences prognosis, but also because if cats do develop a significant proteinuria, that's something that we should be treating. In general, the quickest and easiest way to get a urine sample from a cat is to do a procedure called cystocentesis. And to do that, the first step is to make sure that you can palpate the cat's bladder. If you can't palpate the cat's bladder, then you shouldn't stick a needle into the abdomen. And if you find, either because the cat's very fat or because the bladder's very small, that you can't palpate it, then an alternative is to use ultrasound to guide you in placement of your needle. Cystocentesis can be done with the cat in any position. They can be standing in lateral recumbency or lying on their back. Really the main thing is that they are as relaxed as possible and you can still palpate the bladder whilst doing this procedure. The equipment that I use to collect a cystocentesis sample is a 5 or 10 mil syringe and a 23 gauge needle, usually using a 1 inch long needle. Once I'm happy that I can palpate the cat's bladder, I then can remove the tip of my needle and get into position to collect a sample. So again, I stabilise the bladder, and once I'm happy it's stabilised, I can then introduce the needle over the skin, slide it in very, very gently, and then collect a sample. Once I've collected my sample, I then release my hold on the bladder and withdraw the needle. And my sample is then ready to place in a collection tube. And five mils of urine is gen generally adequate to do all of the tests that we need to be done. It's very common for an owner to not recognise signs of CKD. And that's simply because most often those signs are very subtle and easy to miss. And they're also quite non-specific. In my experience, many owners will not notice quite significant weight loss in their cat. For example, 10 to 20% weight loss in their cat over a period of a year is uh, something that passes unnoticed from an owner's opinion, just because by virtue of the fact they're living with their cat, they don't notice what are quite small changes on a day-to-day -day basis. Regular assessment of geriatric cats is very important. Rather than having specific clinics for geriatric patients, I find it's usually easiest to just build in those checkups into my normal working day. And what I advocate is a 20 minute appointment for an older cat. The biggest problem I think with running geriatric clinics in practice is the lack of time that most vets suffer. So my tips really for being successful would be to use your support staff effectively. So use your nurses to help you assess blood pressure, weigh your patients, perhaps even taking the history for you as well. Secondly, consider using questionnaires that an owner can complete whilst they're sitting in the waiting room. 
that will help to identify problem areas in that particular patient. Also, inviting owners urine samples can help save time in terms of sample collection and allows you to at least assess something with the cat there and then. Um, and really making sure that all of your staff and your practice are as educated as possible um, that this is an important area to work on. So geriatric cats need to come in frequently and they need to have um, a good decent length of consultation with you and your nurse, say 20 minutes for example.